All right, it's 9.30. Yeah. The appointed time for the meeting of the Wood County Board of Supervisors, so I'll call the August meeting to order. I would ask the clerk to please take the roll. Thank God he signed me in, because I didn't do that. Thank you. Which uh, says he's not here. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Bill, you need to sign in. Yeah, I'll be <laughs> uh, This is the part of your favorite. It's fine. Uh, Supervisor Hamilton is online, and Supervisor Rosar will be a few minutes late this morning. She even told us last night the performance of that. So, Trent has the roll taken. I call on Supervisor Fisher. Yeah, if you come forward for the invocation, if everyone would please rise and then remain standing for the pleasure of the meeting. If you feel so led, please pray with me. We come here today to serve the people of Wood County, and we ask for wisdom, and we ask for grace for one another. We ask that you would bestow upon us uh, the wisdom to make decisions that would better our constituents and better Wood County as a whole. As always, we want to remember those in the armed forces and law enforcement. Please protect them and keep them safe. We also, as always, want to remember those uh, less fortunate who live here in Wood County. May we always remember them and may we always remember their needs. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Supervisor Fisher. First thing on order of business today is to take care of the minutes from the preceding session. I entertain a motion to approve by LaFontaine, second by who did I have second? Light, I believe was second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. And opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, moving forward, uh, excusal today, we have none. We have, like I said, Supervisor Hamilton joining us uh, virtually, and Supervisor Roser will be here in a few minutes. Uh, resignations today, we have none. Appointments today, we have an appointment, we have two of them. Is there any objection to me taking these together? Any objection? Uh, we have two appointments today for a term ending April 2023. Uh, Mary Jo Wheeler Schuler uh, to the Health and Human Services Committee and the ADRC, Central Wisconsin Advisory Board, Jennifer Dole. And again, I would entertain a motion to approve by Clendenning, second by Zerflu. Any discussion? Again, all in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. And opposed? Aye. I'm sure that was in favor. And opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, public comment. We have public comment. Is there anybody here from the public that wants to comment on anything on the agenda or germane to county business? If so, please approach the microphone, state your name, and our clerk will put up the timer at some point, and we allow three minutes for a public comment. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Craig Brown. I'm superintendent of Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools. I'm here to speak in favor of the uh, ordinance that will be before you later in the meeting with regard to age restriction on hemp-based THC derivatives. Um, just want to mention that uh, you may hear uh, in other public comment, either now or after, that um, you know age restrictions or some kind of uh, ordinances on <coughs> THC derivatives would create uh, you know issues for individuals uh, in that line of work or in those uh, sorts of businesses. Again, I'd point to the fact that we're simply asking for common sense age restrictions on THC derivatives, which are psychoactive, just like uh, those found in marijuana. Uh, and in fact, in more cases, can be much more potent because of the, the way they are concentrated. As it stands right now, they are unregulated or largely unregulated, uh, both in the state and nationally. Um, another question would be, well, if we take this sort of action, um, what does that mean for other areas? For example, there isn't a state law in the books uh, that restricts age of sale for uh, hemp-based THC derivatives. And in my response to that, I'd say we have to start somewhere, uh, primarily. And then secondarily, I would indicate that 
Um, I intend to and, and have been, but intend to continue communication with our local legislators at the state level around uh, the potential for age restrictions on hemp-based THC derivatives uh, for the state of Wisconsin as well. So that would be in process. The last thing I'll mention uh, with the few seconds that I have remaining would be that um, to think that this is not an issue is a complete misnomer. Um, students at Lincoln High School and in other schools that we operate as well as in the county uh, have access, uh, nearly ubiquitous access to these THC derivatives and that is the vast majority of uh, issues that we face in terms of um, mood altering or psychoactive substances. So I'm not going to say illegal because of course uh, in Wisconsin and, and here locally they're technically not, which is part of the problem. So again, I, I'm asking you to vote in favor of the ordinance of age restriction of sales to have based THC derivatives. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good, good morning, everybody. My name is Wayne Sorens. I'm a project manager with the Family Health Center of Marshfield Incorporated, located at 1307 North St. Joseph Avenue in Marshfield. I am also here uh, to speak on behalf of the proposed age restriction ordinance for Delta products. Uh, I work with a project called Central Wisconsin Partnership for Recovery, which is focused on several areas, including youth prevention. And I want to share with you just some information as to why we think this aligns really well with the work we're doing, as well as, as the things that really should be done to make sure that the product isn't in the hands of, of youth. Uh, and again, aligned with prevention efforts in the county. It's not approved for safe use by the, uh, by the FDA. It has psychoactive, as Superintendent Brewer indicated, psychoactive and intoxicating effects, effects similar to Delta 9. And unfortunately, based on information we've seen locally, it has a uh, packaging that is marketed to kids. Uh, if you happen to see any of the presentations that were put forward by the Public Health Department, uh, Ashley and Jacob, you'll see that there, uh, there appears to be some intentionality for marketing to an age group that probably shouldn't have access to this, uh, these products. <clears throat> According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration, or SAMHSA, most people begin using substances between the ages of 14 and 20, and again, yet another reason why we think it would be appropriate to have an age restriction. The CDC has recently released a health advisory on the increased availability of cannabis products containing Delta-8 THC. There has been a high number of reports involving Delta-8 THC-containing products, including recently one pediatric case that was coded as a mental, uh, medical outcome of death. Delta-8, as Superintendent Burns said, is psychoactive and has an intoxicating effect. And, and just to be clear, it's manufactured. It is not a natural substance. There are chemicals that are used that have been. Uh, there are questions about the safety of the chemicals used to enhance the high. Uh, and again, it, those would argue uh, that it's, it comes from a natural substance this product is manufactured. Um, it's in, it, it is intentional uh, to enhance the high. Uh, potentially, the chemicals are harmful. Uh, and they involve, uh, and they involve again, a creation. Again, we're not advocating. And just as a clear, uh, just to be clear in terms of my affiliation, I'm a member of the Impact THC Committee and very much support and have been involved in this work. But we're not asking for a, 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 or suggesting a ban, but based on current data, an impact on users, it warrants an age restriction and would support this, uh, this, this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment today? Sir. My name is Jesse McKeever. I'm a resident of Grand Rapids. Uh, I'm here in support of the advisory referendum question uh, that's going to be brought before you guys regarding statewide ballot initiatives. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Any other public comment? <coughs> public comment today? That brings us to acknowledgments and recognition. Mr. Boyd, that will be the floor. <clears throat> On August 3rd, the bridge at Highway 10 and County A was dedicated as a memorial bridge in honor of Deputy Sheriff LeVon Zenner, who tragically lost her life in a traffic fatality up there on Stat Road and Highway 10 in 1989. We had a great turnout. There was a lot of law enforcement from North Central Wisconsin present. Uh, we had county board supervisors, Donna, Ed, Joe, and myself. Uh, we had uh, speakers, Sheriff uh, Becker, spoke on behalf of his department. I was honored to speak on behalf of the Public Safety Committee as Vice Chair. But I would like to recognize one person who worked tremendously hard in getting that bridge not only dedicated, 
but also putting on that program that morning. Come on up here, Sarah. Don't be bashful. She's not bashful when she asked me to take everything out of my pocket. Deputy Sheriff Sarah McCormick, who worked tremendously hard. I want you to say a couple of words. Okay. Um, so the bridge is done, the signs are up, um, the family was very appreciative of all of the efforts of everybody that was involved from um, the county board members to the state representatives to the governor. Um, it was a very uh, heartfelt day for them. They were, um, some of you know and some of you don't, mid-state awarded her diploma to her to the family, um, and one gentleman in particular who never wants his name um, mentioned, but he had her gun after she was killed. Um, the family gave him her gun that she had bought to wear and was killed wearing, and they, he gave that back to her son. So very appreciative that, that he did that. But all in all, I think it would read very well. I'm very happy that it's over. It was a lot of work, but I do appreciate all the support that all of us have um, come together to make this happen for that family. So thank you. I have a couple of these left. If anybody's interested in one of these, I have a couple with me. That's all I have left. Oh, I have plenty. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. If you want some, I have plenty. <laughs> all right. As they search you at the front door, they'll hand you one. <laughs> I, you know, I, I really want to say thank you, too. I mean, it, it always takes a team effort, but it takes a driving force always. It takes somebody to lead the effort. I'm greatly, deeply appreciative of what you did. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, County Board. Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Supervisor. Wait, Supervisor Zerflu. Mr. Chairman, I rise to have an official moment of silence for the deputy that has passed and uh, final farewell. I think that's appropriate. I ask the board please rise in a moment of silence and respect of the light. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here um, or jump the gun, but uh, we had a recent election. Uh, one of those was for a clerk of courts. Uh, there's no candidate on the other side of the ballot, and, and we have a person who prevailed in the primary who I assume will be our clerk of courts here very quickly. Um, I understand the judges might even move that direction sooner, but uh, Kimberly Stimek, if, you, if you'd like to stand up, be recognized, uh, so you know who you're looking at in the courthouse going forward. Uh, look forward to working with you in the future, right? So I just sit back there with my So uh, congratulations, and we're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess I'm just going to add this here. First of all, I really appreciate the board uh, allowing me to move the meeting a week later so I could attend that National Insurance Conference. We, as a county, are insured by Wisconsin County Mutual, and every year they have a conference where they send me out to try to educate me. Uh, we get some of the continuing education done at that. And, you know, one of the things that I think I'm most proud of when we're out there, we see, we identify, and we talk about uh, IT security issues uh, and the compliance that we have there, uh, our law enforcement, uh, that whole department, uh, how they work, their inner workings, the, the jail itself, and how that relates to uh, liability, uh, as well as, and, and almost more importantly, is one of the things we talk about out there, is the behavior of county boards uh, and other commissions. And uh, I think we're to be lauded uh, in all of those areas in the way we perform, because when they're talking about shortcomings, my list is a lot shorter than everybody else's out there. So I really appreciate, A, that you allowed me to move the meeting, and two, that we continue down those roads to, uh, to be compliant, because those costs go directly to the bottom line uh, when we have those liability issues. And, and when I say the bottom line, I always laugh when somebody says, well, the government's going to pay it. Well, for all those people out there listening or watching on TV, the government is you. That means the individual. So thank you very much in that respect. All right, we can move into the packet. I guess we have some referrals here. There were four of them uh, that came forth, uh, one from St. Croix County, uh, Taylor County, Brown County, and the memorandum from the Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission, and all of those went to Supervisor Glendening for your committee, I am sure. Is that true, Supervisor Glendening? Yes, it is. Okay. 
All right, so let's move into the packet then. We are not going to have a special order of business today, as I stated before, from the Parks Department. Uh, you've seen their report, you can read that, uh, which will probably greatly shorten the, the time frame of this meeting. Uh, so moving forward in the packet, page 7, uh, to begin is the Operations Committee. They're meeting with August 2nd, that's pages 7 and 8. On pages 9 and 10, we have the update from the County Clerk's Office. Pages 11 through 15 is the Human Resources Department, their update. Page 16 and 17, an update from the Treasurer's Office. <clears throat> Page 18 is Employee Wellness. And without objection, I'd like to take these tax deed authorization resolutions together. We have nine of them, I believe, don't we? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. <laughs> Any objections to taking the tax deed resolutions together? All right, I'd ask the clerk to please read the resolution. <coughs> I'm going to shorten this up, even though the treasurer's trying to kill me from trying to talk all this much. First one is resolution 22-8-1. Authorize the sale of tax deed property back to the former owner. Fiscal note, paid amount of $6,711.29. Resolution 22-8-2 has a paid amount of $10,756.66. Resolution 22-8-3 has a paid amount of $3,793.68. Resolution 22-8-4 has a paid amount of $983.20. Resolution 22-8-5 has a paid amount of $15,521.27. Resolution 22-8-6 has a paid amount of $166,333.49. Resolution 22-8-7 has a paid amount of $11,263.74. Resolution 22-8-8 has a paid amount of $9,567.16. Okay, I guess we have eight of them. I would entertain a motion to approve by Rosar, second by Bry. Vote. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Then all in favor of those resolutions, I'll please vote. vote. No. You've, got, you've got one of these deals in your hands. Yes. Yep. Supervisor Hamilton. Thank you, Brad. And again, thank you. The vote was unanimous in adoption, passing those resolutions, all eight of those. Moving forward in the packet, pages 29 and 30. Uh, Minutes of the Health and Human Services Committee, uh, their meeting of July 19th. Let's go back to page 28. Supervisor Zerflu? Uh, just to remind you on page 28. Yeah, I had stapled it together until Trent caught me there. I guess I was over aggressive with the stapling. Page 28, another resolution brought forth by the operations. This will be resolution 22-8-9. To ratify a negotiated agreement by and between Wood County and the Wood County Deputy Sheriff's Association for the term effective January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2025. Fiscal note, cost increase over the three-year contract totals $287,387. Yeah, that was kind of important to have stuck to the back of that other packet. So I have a motion by Supervisor Clendenning, second by Supervisor Zerflu. All right, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion on the resolution? And this is the ratified agreement between Wood County and the Sheriff's Department. Any discussion? All right, please vote. Hamilton, yes. Thank you, Supervisor Hamilton. And that resolution passed 18 to 1. 18 to 1. Thank you. Yeah, I've got to be careful with the stapler there. I had that stick to the back of the staples from the one before. So if you ever see that, stop me, right? Uh, Health and Human Services Committee, pages 29 and 30. They're meeting from Tuesday, July 19th. Uh, moving forward, beginning on page 31 and then 32. Health and Human Services Committee, they're meeting from July 28th. Uh, North Central Community Action, pages 33, 34, and 35. Page 36, Minutes of the Veterans Service Commission. We have an update from the Health Department, beginning on page 37, and it runs through page 41, 37 to 41. We have an update from the Human Services Department, beginning with Director Brewings on 42, and those run through page 49, pages 42 through 49. 
We have the Veteran Service Officers Report on 50 and 51, 50 and 51. And then minutes of the Wood County Public Safety Committee, their minutes from July 11th, beginning on page 52, and those run through page 55. The Public Safety Committee from August 8th, beginning on page 56, and that runs through page 60. 56 through 60. We have various humane officer reports uh, beginning in June. Uh, they start on page 61 and they run all the way through page 77. Page 61 through 77. I'll give you a minute to catch up on that. And then just about the time to catch up on that, we have the monthly report from the Sheriff's Department and those run from pages 78 to 101, and those are all inclusive of rescue, crime stoppers, jail, uh, everything else that's in under the jurisdiction of the Sheriff's Department. That's 78 through 101. And then that brings us to the resolution on page 102, and it runs to 103 with some of the information. I ask the clerk to please read the resolution. This will be ordinance number 22-8-10 to enact a county ordinance that prohibits the possession of hemp-derived cannabinoids, including but not limited to Delta-8 THC and Delta-10 THC type products by anyone under the age of 21 and the sale of such products to them. Fiscal note, nothing direct. The motion by Supervisor Fisher and a second by Supervisor Lightman. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion on the resolution? <laughs> I ask you to please vote. Thank you. And the resolution passed unanimously. Thank you. Moving forward in the packet, page 104, we have another resolution from the Public Safety Committee. This will be resolution 22-8-11. To provide for anticipated revenue from the Bureau of Traffic Safety, housed with the Department of Transportation's Division of State Patrol and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, to finance additional patrol for failure to stop, failure to yield, and distracted driving to help reduce the number of crashes in identified areas throughout Wood County through December 2022. Fiscal note, the cost to be funded in the 22 2022 budget are in traffic police overtime and sheriff administration. The adjustment to the budget totals $28,295. I have a motion by Brian, second by Zerflu. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. And again, that resolution passed 19-0. Moving forward in your packet on page 105 and 106, the Tuesday, July 19th minutes of the seat committee. They had a meeting on August 1st, begins on page 107 and runs through 111, 107 to 111. The seat committee meeting from Wednesday, August 3rd, begins on page 112 and runs to page 117, 112 to 117. The Wood County Land Information Council minutes from August 2nd on 118 and 119. Uh, UW Extension, 120, 121, and 122, their monthly letter of comments. Maybe kind of an important time to do this. The fair started today, um, I believe. Does anybody want to speak to that real quickly? Anybody know what's going on? Speak. <laughs> 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 when you need <laughs> Anyway, a number of you work at the fair uh, a fair amount of the time out there, uh, whether it's at ticket booths or helping out at, at different different charitable organizations. But fair runs today. It is one of the better uh, county fairs in, in the entire state of Wisconsin. And I would urge attendance of everybody, both out there in the public and county board members, so you can see what goes on out there. So that started today. So that's 120 through 122 UW Extension and. Obviously, 4-H is a big part of that fair, and it's under their jurisdiction. We have the staff report from um, Land and Water Conservation, 123 to 129. The Citizens Groundwater Group Meeting of Monday, July 18th, on 130. 
there's a fairly long uh, report in here. It's the high nitrates in Nelsonville, uh, part of the seminar that was done, pages 131 to 149. 131 to 149. And then we have the monthly letter of comments from the Planning and Zoning Office, beginning with Director Grunenberg's on 150. And those run through 153. On August 5th, we had the meeting of the Judicial and Legislative Committee, began on page 154 and goes through 158, 154 through 158. Notice of injury and claim. Several of those, 159 to 163. 159 to 163. The update from Director Brewing and the Child Support Agency on 164. From Corp Council on 165. From our Criminal Justice Department, our Criminal Justice Coordinator, 166, 67, <coughs> and 68. From the Register of Deeds Office on 169. Victim witness 170. And that brings us to page 171 in the next resolution in your packet. This will be resolution 22 8 12 to modify county board rule number 16 so as to not limit the number of county board supervisors who can attend the annual WCA convention. Fiscal note nothing direct. There is a possibility of a slight increase in per diems and mileage for conference attendance. Hamilton, so moved. I have a motion by Hamilton, a second by Clendenning. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion? Please vote. Hamilton, yes. Thank you, Supervisor Hamilton. And that resolution passed 17 to 2. 17 to 2. All right, moving forward in the packet, page 172. Uh, next resolution in the packet. This will be resolution 22-8-13, to conduct a countywide advisory referendum on whether the state should allow direct ballot initiatives for statewide legislation. Fiscal note, minimal layout and coding charges. Motion by Clendenning, a second by Zerflu. Discussion on the resolution. Supervisor Roser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will be voting against this. You all know I've never been a real fan of advisory referen referendums, but I have a deeper reason for not, um, for not voting for this. We are a republic, not a democracy. Uh, I've watched what's happened in California, where everything goes on a ballot uh, for people's input, and I believe that representatives are elected to represent the constituency that they uh, were elected to represent. And this is a, um, a direct affront on our republic. In California, they have like 25 <laughs> initiatives listed on their ballot. There is no way that the common voter, the person that just goes out, doesn't really pay attention to things, there's really no way that they can understand the impact of what their vote means on any particular issue. Um, we have a lot of people that don't do their homework before they go vote. Uh, they are not as informed. When, when a issue comes before this body or before a legislative body, there's a tremendous amount of vetting that goes on on that issue. That vetting does not occur when you put a direct question on a ballot because people just don't take the time and with the number of initiatives that probably could be on a ballot, you're not going to get an informed decision on every vote that's taken. So while I'm not a fan of advisory referendums, I'm really not a fan of this because uh, we're not a democracy, we are a republic, and this is just a um, thwarting of the process that goes on with legislative issues and the vetting that occurs before people that are elected to do an in-depth in look at the issues that are to be voted on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I voted today just a few minutes ago to bring this to the floor because I believe the whole board should vote on it. Uh, I originally voted against this in legislative judiciary. And I'll tell you why. I, I related something to the committee that uh, I think would, would serve well to uh, let the rest of the board know. 
we talked about a historical fact, and it's funny because it sort of ties in with what Mrs. Rosar said. There's a story about uh, at the time that they were forming the Constitution, uh, Benjamin Franklin was confronted by a lady outside of the, the hall, and she asked, what kind of, uh, 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 what kind of government did you give us? And he said, and she, he said, I give you a republic if you can keep it. He also was asked why we needed two houses, bicameral, that is the, the, uh, uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate. And what he did at that time was rather telling. What he did is he took a saucer and he poured his tea into the saucer and he swirled it around and then sipped it. And he told her, he answered her, to cool the passions. The founders knew very well why, why the, how the public could become aroused and how populist movements could tilt the scales in a different way. And what they needed was the time to cool off. They knew the House of Representatives being the most direct uh, house to the people was subject more to the passions than anything else, than the Senate. And the Senate would cool the passions. We all know, we've seen the public get riled up about things just recently, within the past two years. Sometimes based on rumor, sometimes based on fact, sometimes based on exaggerated fact. And there's nobody there to cool the temperature now. That's what I'm afraid of with, with the, um, uh, the direct referendum. We are, in many regards, we are the body to cool the passions. We are the ones who are most in contact with our constituents. And we are the ones who are more likely to bring differing views to the floor. And speaking of differing views, this is the first time I've agreed with Supervisor Bill Rosar. Not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so noted. <laughs> so noted. We got a little anyway, anyway, yeah. But, uh, but the, the, I, think, I think we need to still cool the passions. We still need to conduct the rational debates on this floor as opposed to making it law on the basis of the passion of the moment. And for that, I, I thank you for the chair of the time. I thank the chair for the time. The well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, of course, I, I am going to vote in favor of it. I, I'm surprised at Supervisor Wagner because he did speak on this at the board. We had it before the, uh, the committee. We had it, I believe, four months before it. We've acted on it three times, and the fourth time when we did pass it. We had plenty of public input for it. I, I'll just tell you why I think it's a good idea. Um, I'm not going to move to California, uh, Supervisor Robert Wurlzar. I'm going to stay right here and, and probably try to get this in if it don't pass today. One of the things is, is we've had 13 water bills into the legislature. I've been fighting bad water, contaminated water for, for almost 50, 60 years, and, and it's got no place with Republicans or Democrats or anything in office. But now we've got it, we, got, we send it down there, and not one of those were passed. Not one of those were passed. And we had a resolution on water here. And what did Supervisor Rodar say? We don't, I'm going to vote no on this because we're going to do with water what we want. I think this is a good way to have that threat, that there may be a petition up and has to pass two legislative two legislative sessions to get in. So I, I'm voting for it, and I wish the West would. Thank you. Further discussion. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to be voting for this direct ballot initiative too. I won't speak to it as long as, as Supervisor Wagner did, but I was a civics teacher for 35 years. I always tell everybody that I did seventh grade 36 times. One of the things I said to my seventh graders throughout that whole period of time about the Constitution and about how we do things in a democracy, despite the fact that we're a republic, is that electorate bashing is inherently bad. Um, there, there was a time when we were thought to be dumb dirt farmers, and I, I think we've moved way past that time. Um, the noted CBS newsman, Eric Severide, said at one point that we may get things wrong, but we will muddle through. And so uh, 
I think the fourth whereas, I'm just going to read the operative line to you here. The fourth whereas to this ballot initiative says it makes legislators more responsive to the desires of the people. And that's the way it should be. I'm, I'm voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Further discussion? All right, I'd ask you to please vote. Hamilton, yes. Hamilton's a yes. The resolution passed 12-7. 12-7. All right, moving forward in the packet, page 173, minutes of the Highway Infrastructure Recreation Committee. They're mentioned from July 19th, 173 and 174. Uh, their meeting of August 4th, 175, 176, and 177. Same committee, Thursday, August 8th, page 178. And then we have a report from the Highway Commissioner, beginning on 179, and that runs through page 184, 179 through 184. We have the update from the Park and Forestry Department, beginning on 185, and running through 189, 185 through 189. We have the Pitt Committee meeting of August 1st, 190. 91 and 92. Update from IT, 193 through 196. 193 through 196. Update from our facilities manager, uh, Ruben Van Tassel. Uh, Ruben asked if you do an update on the jail project at the board. They're having a meeting immediately after for those of you who are available and want to attend that. Uh, we have a very in-depth update of what's going on with the jail immediately following this meeting. So any questions on 197? We went to the ADRC, their minutes, uh, from Thursday, uh, June 9th, and 198, 99, and 200. And then they have their meeting from July 14th, 201 through 203. Their finance committee meeting on 204. Uh, their finance committee from July 11th on 205 and 206. Then we move to the library minutes. We have the minutes of the Macmillan Memorial Library uh, Board of Trustees of May 18th on 207, 8 and 9. Supervisor Clendenning. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to say something. Uh, we have a new director on board now, and she's coming from uh, northern Wisconsin. I, uh, the library is really moving in a different direction now. Our, now our big concern is the solar panels that will be ours at the end of this year, and we have to decide whether we want to keep them or not. So that's just a little update on McMillan Library. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all you got a lot of minutes. <laughs> yes. All right, we have their minutes from May 18, uh, 207 through 209. Their minutes of May 20th on 210. June 3rd minutes on 211. June 15th on 212 through 214. And that brings me to the South Central Library System, their Board of Trustee Minutes on 215, 16, 17, and 18, 215 through 218. Minutes from the UW Commission, their meeting of May 12th on 219, <coughs> 20, and 21. And then we have the ARPA Funding Ad Hoc Committee meeting on 222. Now, Supervisor Clendenin. Thank you. I just want to go back to the UW system. I was quite surprised to see the agenda on that. I, I, I am concerned about it. It's the fact that it was remote and that the, uh, the connection would be sent to members of the board. Why, why can't the public get that? I mean, I had to call one of the members of the board to get it. But, but there was no remote because it was going to be the day of the meeting, they would establish that connection. So I just think that should be. Fix. Thank you. So, I want to make sure that those are posted far enough in advance and that access is given. We'll make sure that we handle that. Thank you. Um, as we move to that last page, that 222, I've talked to several of the committee chairs recently, uh, as well as some of the department heads. As we move forward through the budget process, I would like this, and I believe all the uh, all those committee chairs seem like, to adapt your budgets, to look at those budgets as you normally would. Um, the ARPA funding isn't a magic 
you know, toolbox over here where we can fix everything just because there's some money here. There are some extraordinary projects that we'll definitely fund out of that. There's some infrastructure uh, that needs to be taken care of. Uh, but what we don't want to see is somebody say, eh, well, that really didn't fit my budget, so let's just throw that at ARPA. Uh, that is not an appropriate use. So as you continue to sharpen your pencils out there and we adopt that budget, there will be uh, items that will fall into that category uh, that we will fund in that manner, and some of those have been identified to some extent, at least generally already, uh, as to where some of those monies will probably end up. But again, it's the regular budget process and then the additional spending uh, as needed out of ARPA for those extraordinary projects. That moves me through the packet. Um, is there anything else that needs to come before the board? Supervisor Clendenning. Hey, okay. Um, I mean, I'm with Fair Board, uh, and I'd just like to say, yes, the fair is starting today. I tried to get somebody down here to speak about it. I tried to get somebody from the fair to come to the Towns Association and come, and, and I think the committee that I'm on is, I'm getting used to it. I don't know how long I'll stay on it because of the way they do things, but I, I just wish I, I wish I had more to tell you about the fair. Uh, we're spending a lot of money on it, and uh, I just hear that the county owes money to the fair for different things, electrical hookups. But I, I, I never see that come to this board. So I, I would like somebody to go with me to in the committee. You know what I mean? The, the, the U Lance, and I, I just think there's so many things that has to be straightened out about that committee. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that they think that they have to follow Robert's rules because they're not an organization, a government organization. So I just wish I had more to report. Yeah. No, I appreciate the comment. I don't know if they've adopted Robert's rules of order. Uh, Peter, have they? Do you know? I have no idea. I don't know if they have, Mr. Chairman, but they are a governmental entity. Well, they, government. they should. Yes. Yeah, or some variation there. Well, um, Supervisor Benning, we'll, we'll address that. I, we will have some updates and presence on the radio down here uh, in Wisconsin Rapids tomorrow. Uh, work through that. But uh, all that being said, the fair is a great event up there. You know, I always tell people, I, I do not remember what, I really don't remember what I ate for lunch yesterday. It's probably because I skipped it. But, um, but I do remember those days back with whether it be grandparents or parents going to the fair. So. Uh, and I, you know, I have some black tickets to sell. <laughs> you you there. Yeah. So see Mr. Clendenning yeah. after the meeting. Our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 21st. That's immediately after the WCA conference. Wednesday, September 21st. So hopefully some of you will do that. Supervisor LaFontaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to invite everyone present here to the fair, to the new renovated, reconstructed American Legion stand to have whatever you want to see, a nice stand. We spent a lot of time in the last few weeks of renovating the stand. And you can come and have an excellent hamburger, cheeseburger, Legion burger, or you can have a, something to drink, an adult beverage. <laughs> Thank you. I think the appropriate message there is there's a lot of organizations that, that raise a lot of money that they that they have through the entire year for their budget to provide those services throughout the county. So uh, with that said, I guess I'll declare the meeting adjourned. We'll see you all in September.